Hi, welcome to Nancy's Notions Wardrobe Builder. I'm Joy Mahone, and in 2021, I'm gonna take you on a journey of learning how to make a new apparel item each month as we build our own wardrobes. Now, my new sewers, you're gonna feel confident in achieving your results because we're gonna go step-by-step step through each design. My confident sewers, we're gonna help you by delving into things like fit and additional tips and tricks that will further grow your skills. Now, don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. Now this month, we are jumping into my favorite design, the classic Betty dress. There are so many amazing things that you can learn from this basic design. And believe it or not, the foundation for many garments like jackets and blouses and suit tops comes from the basic shape used on the bodice of this design. If you're thinking, I don't really wear dresses, don't discount this lesson. There are many things that you can learn by just focusing on the fit of the upper bodice. All right, grab your favorite Nancy's Notions wardrobe builder fabric and let's get started. Supplies needed for the Betty dress Dress include notions such as magic pins, interfacing, lining, thread, and the fabric of your choice. The pattern we will be sewing together is the Betty dress pattern available at nancysnotions.com. I will be sewing with the downloadable PDF version, so you'll see how to use one of those as well. Let's take a moment and talk about fabrics. This dress design is so classic and it will look amazing in any fabric. We have a beautiful selection of some beautiful drapey crepe fabrics, do peonies, we have some of our wardrobe builder ponte knits. Yes, you can make this dress out of a knit as well as being able to pick out prints and patterns, including some beautiful rayons and some chambray fabric. And who doesn't love a beautiful blue chambray dress? It's just so classic and will look amazing on anybody. Well, let's take a moment and talk about fit, and then we'll be ready to cut out our pattern pieces and create our own Betty dress. So you've picked out your fabric for your Betty dress. We have one more thing we need to talk about. You probably have guessed it, fitting. How are we gonna fit this pattern? Because fit can be a challenge for some sewers. What I would like to do is take a few minutes to show you step-by-step step how you can customize this pattern to get that truly custom fit. So then you can come back here and sew start to finish and have a new addition to your wardrobe. So jump on over to the Nancy's Notions Wardrobe Builder 101 tutorial videos and look for fitting the upper bodice and you'll be able to customize this pattern and have amazing results. If you've taken the time to modify your bodice pattern to a custom fit, you are now ready to cut this garment out of your fashion fabric. This is a great pattern because it doesn't have a large quantity of pattern pieces, so you can really focus on a beautiful fit, beautiful sewing, and feature whatever fabric you have selected. There is a pattern guide that comes with your pattern and it shows different configurations for laying out your fabric. What I'd like you to do is just reference that because based on the fabric you've selected, you might fold it in different length or width configurations and then you'll be able to place your pattern pieces accordingly. The most important thing that you need to pay attention to are the pattern markings. And there really are just a few on this particular design. Uh, the skirt pattern is cut on the center front on the fold. Now, of course, if you wanted to have a seam down the center front, you absolutely could do that. But if you don't want that, you're gonna wanna make sure that according to your pattern chart that you fold your fabric so that you can take your skirt fabric, for example, let's move that torso out of the way, and that you can place that on the fold. Now, when we get to actually cutting out fabric, I'm only gonna illustrate on the bodice today because the skirt really is a large piece and it's a little difficult to see on camera. But if you reference your chart here, it's just a, a basically a circle skirt pattern. The center front, as I mentioned, cut on the fold. The back piece is not cut on the fold. You're able to insert the zipper down the back, so that will make that layout easy. And then, of course, you can address whatever size uh, skirt you're making, you would cut on the corresponding dotted line. Now, in the introduction to this lesson, I mentioned that I am using a downloadable PDF pattern. So you'll see, if you look real close, that this is multiple pieces of paper taped together. 
If you've never used a PDF before, they're really pretty easy to do. And all you need to do is line up your um, lines on the pattern and it takes about a whole a little thing of scotch tape to do this particular pattern. And then they go consecutively. So letters of the alphabet. So a, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then there's an additional row. So just pay attention to that when you're laying them out, tape it together well, and it's a great durable paper. So you'll be able to use that over and over again. All right, we are going to be sewing this design with a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance or 1.5 centimeter uh, if you're using centimeters. So that will be your seam allowance unless otherwise indicated in your design. So that's built into the size of your pattern. Uh, and again, if you have used that 101 video on fitting the bodice, then we've discussed that in there as well. You have a few notches to pay attention to. We have notches at the waistline and then down the side seam of the skirt. So those will help to line your pieces together. But because this is a pretty simple design, there are really minimal uh, markings that we need to pay attention to. Well, I hope you're excited because now is the time to cut our pattern pieces out of our fabric. Now I mentioned I'm only gonna feature cutting out the two bodice pieces because there are a few tips that I wanna share, things that I use in my studio every single day when it comes to cutting out pattern pieces for accuracy. You can reference your pattern layout for cutting the pattern pieces for the skirt, as I mentioned a moment ago. All right, so typically in garment sewing, you have a tissue paper pattern or you might have a downloadable pattern. And the general process is that you lay your pattern piece out uh, and then you measure from the grain line to the fold and you measure from the grain line to the fold, make sure that that's even, and then you start pinning around your pattern piece. Or in this example, we are going to put the center front of the bodice on the fold so that there is no fold going down or there's no seam line going down the center front. And we certainly could do that right, you know, with this exact uh, pattern. But let me show you a couple things that can happen when we do that. And then let me share with you my trick or, or tip that I use. Okay, so we are going to uh, just assume that this measures evenly and which is normally what I would do. I would take that tape measure, measure that, uh, but for illustrative purposes, I'm just going to um, put a couple of pins on here. Now, this is a pretty stable pattern, but I am using a crepe fabric that is not slinky, but it does have a little bit of shifting that can happen. It does not have to be a difficult pattern or fabric to work with, um, but newer sewers might find that, oh, there's a little bit of shifting. So let's address that issue. So I just quickly, very quickly put a couple pins on here. Some people will put their pins uh, horizontal, others vertical. My personal innuendo is typically I do vertically, um, but let's address this right here. So um, we're gonna cut this pattern out and we're going across the bottom and it doesn't seem too, too bad, okay? Now I would probably put more pins on there, but let me show you the main takeaway. All right, so here I'm gonna put a pin on the arm's eye. Now what happens when we take large scissors, and of course you could use a smaller set of scissors, but we're starting to go around this arm's eye and the fabric can, and I'm just doing this kind of quickly here, um, but the fabric can shift a little and sometimes it's difficult to get large scissors right next to your pattern, even your tissue paper pattern because that's a large angle and these are a normal pair of scissors. If you looked really close, you would notice that there that I wasn't right up next to that stitching line. And on a design like this, we do want to make sure that there isn't shifting of the pattern pieces so that the width of our shoulder seam is exact from the front to back. You'll be so much happier with your results. Now, if you have a scant amount in the arm, the arm's eye, it's not gonna ruin the project, but again, we do wanna strive for accuracy the best we can. So rather than pinning down our actual pattern, you're gonna love this. I like to make a tracing of my pattern on oak tag. 
You can use construction paper, manila file folders. There are uh, many options for that. But the idea is that this is a little heavier, uh, heavier paper. So I'm gonna line up the center front. I don't really need all the markings and things that are on here because you'll notice that look what I did. I cut out the body of the dart. What this allows me to do is keep the original pattern. So if I wanna use it again uh, or use a different size, I have that. Now this one is actually cut down so it's a little smaller size than um, if I place this on here, you'll see that this is, let's pull this up just a little, you'll see that this is a specific size. And how did I get this? What I did was I laid this pattern on the paper and I traced around it with a tracing wheel. I traced the dart. And then what I did when I cut this out was I actually cut the leg of the dart out. Now we don't wanna cut that out of the fabric, but that allows me uh, an easily accessible way to place that marking on the fabric. So we're gonna line this up on the fold and I use pattern weights a lot. This is mine in my studio. Uh, so whatever pattern weights you have, here's what we're gonna do. We are not going to pin this to the, the fabric. Instead, we're gonna take chalk and, and really one weight is sufficient and I am gonna hold whatever kind of chalk you're using a, a chalk wheel, um, but as I go around, I'm holding the edge of this pattern with my finger. So the fabric might shift out here, but it's getting a very precise mark right next to the pattern piece. All right, and we'll go around this quick. I am able to hold that down and again, I'm holding this here. So you might see some wiggling out there, but once it relaxes, I check and make sure that that marking is right next to that. The other great thing is that if you have an oak tag copy of your pattern, it's like a final copy. It's very sturdy. You can punch a hole in it and hang it on a pattern hook. And then you even wouldn't even have to keep that. That's what I do in my studio. So all my patterns that I use over and over again are uh, made out of this durable oak tag. Okay, so now what I can do is I can lift this up. The lines are fairly faint. So you may or may not be able to see those really, really dark, but I can see them. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a pin through the fabric at the tip of the dart. I'm also gonna do that on this side. The pin goes through to the back side of the fabric. So now I can put a pin and what I'm doing here is I'm tracing where the dart is. So I don't have to put tracing paper on there. I don't need to go in and, and uh, baste. I, I could baste it, but I wouldn't need to. And this is the wrong side of the fabric, by the way. So what I'm doing is I'm pinning these together so the fabric is not going to shift. All right, and then I would do that on the lower portion. And now, instead of trying to work around a pattern, what I'm gonna do is I am going to cut, um, and depends on which scissors I'm using. Um, so typically, when you're cutting longer cuts, I was actually just using the back side of these scissors so that I could kind of maneuver around. And that's such a much cleaner cut then I can take a long cut going across here, um, you know, and everyone has their own kind of innuendos and in, in how they and mannerisms and how you cut. But that's a great tool. You can go all the way around that. And then let me flip this over. You'll see, let's smooth that out. So what looks just like pins are actually little areas that I can run my chalk against. And then it transfers those markings to the other side and there's no shifting of the fabric when I put tracing paper there or none of that. This is an exact replica and your checks and balances would be to open that up, lay it on top of this pattern and it should be an exact match. Uh, we can also just lay this back on here and check where the pins are and that also looks great. So I hope that that's a helpful tip. It really kind of streamlines the cutting process. It just takes a moment to make a tracing, but it saves a lot of steps at this point, and it gives you a very accurate tracing of your pattern. 
All right, well, cut out your front and back. The other thing I want to mention is that there is a facing pattern with this particular uh, or pattern piece. I am going to be actually creating a lining. And so instead of using the facing pattern, I'm taking this exact pattern piece and I'm going to cut this out of my Bimberg rayon lining. So it's going to mirror the fashion fabric and then that way when I sew it together, it's an exact match. My last tip I'm going to leave you with, and you're going to see this throughout this lesson, are the magic pins. Now I'm going to share a little uh, goal that I have had for myself. Uh, we should always be learning and challenging ourselves in sewing. One goal that I have had is to really use specific pins for specific projects because just like threads and other notions, they're meant for different purposes. You have applique pins for applique, quilting pins for quilting. Well, these magic pins are magic and I have fallen in love with these. So I have little pin cushions around my studio that all have different types of pins. These are great because they have a fine point and it works really well with these delicate fabrics or these lighter weight fabrics. So check that out. And there's an amazing rubber gripper to hold onto, which makes them very pliable and they are pliable. Um, so if you do have one in like a zipper area and you happen to want to turn the hand wheel and go over a pin, it's, it's going to work seamlessly. So I highly recommend trying out magic pins. Uh, they're available on the Nancy's notions.com website. All right. We are going to head on over to our next step at prepping our fabric now and sewing our bodice for our Betty dress. Our pattern pieces are cut out and we are ready to sew the darts on the bodice front, the back, the front lining and the back lining. Now, what I like to do is component sewing. And what that means is we can do as much as we can to a pattern piece before we join it to another. And we also are going to do that to every pattern piece that we possibly can. In this design, we can sew the bodice front darts and the waist dart. We can sew the dart uh, on all these other pieces at the same time. So we'll go to the sewing machine, we'll sew all of these darts, and then we'll come back and join the pieces together. I would recommend doing that instead of pinning this pattern piece, going and sewing, coming back, and then it just takes a lot of time. Okay, I wanna share that this is the, uh, first of all, the Tiffany Blue Wardrobe Builder Crepe, and don't you love this color? It is stunning. I think this would just look great on anybody, and it's so fresh. It has body to it. It has a beautiful hand, beautiful drape, but because it does have some drape, we don't want our pattern pieces to stretch, all right? If you're a newer sewer, probably the biggest obstacle you will have on this project would be accidentally stretching the neckline edges. And if that's the worst thing that happens, you know, we can we can we can teach to that uh, characteristic of the fabric. So what I have here is I actually interfaced with a fusible interfacing the entire front piece. Well, and you would do it on the all pieces. Um, but let's talk about this for a moment. Traditionally, if you are using interfacing and say a collar, uh, a lapel on the front, our instructions usually tell us to put the interfacing on the actual facing or the lining rather than the fashion fabric. And that's not wrong. Uh, equally, it is not incorrect to fuse the wrong side of your fashion fabric. What that does is it changes the characteristics ever so slightly. So this piece right here still has the same stretch and durability, um, but it has a little more stability because I have put the interfacing all over the entire piece. It is not required. I just wanted to point that out that that is something you can do to the pieces on this design. Uh, also, 
you, if you wanted, you could even put interfacing on the wrong side of your lining. When I do bridal wear, there are multiple layers of interfacing inside a garment, including the lining pieces. Um, so the idea is you're just gonna decide on the weight of your fabric if you need to use this application or not. But again, I just wanted to throw that out there. And the nice thing is, is that it will interface the neckline, it will add some stability to the arm's eye, and of course, the back neckline as well. When we get to this part of the, the sewing later on, I will also reference that you're gonna wanna stabilize this edge regardless so that it helps eliminate some stretch. But another option for all of you uh, designers and sewers out there. Okay, we are gonna pin these together and let's just do a quick little demonstration on this piece. I need to flip this over and grab my chalk because I didn't mark the dart on this back side. All right, so we're gonna pull these out and you, depending on your fabric, you certainly could baste some th like thread based the outline of your dart there. It depends on the fabrics that you're using. If you get into like couture sewing, then you're gonna do more hand basting of these elements before you assemble the garment. So what I'm showing you isn't the only way to do things, but this isn't a, an over stylized design. So we also don't wanna overthink it, but apply those uh, techniques. If you're familiar with some and you wanna use them, go right ahead. But what I wanna share is, again, put your pin in the point of where the, the dart tip is. And one other thing that I do is I take my scissors and I put a teeny tiny little clip on either side of the dart uh, at the base of the dart. And then I, what actually what makes it really easy is then I can fold it together. I can match those little clips which then matches the base, the base of the dart, all right? And I just usually flip it over and make sure that the pin is going through the, the dart marking that I don't have it shifted on either side. And then I can put an additional pin in the dart as needed, making sure that again, it's on the dart marking. I can take this to my machine now and sew this dart. And what we'll do is I'm gonna stand here, I'm gonna pin all of these, then I'm gonna to go to the machine and stitch them all at the same time. We are at our sewing machine ready to sew the darts on the front and back pieces of our Betty dress and the front and back lining pieces as well. And I love the fact that we have them all pinned. We're gonna sit down in one setting and do the dart on all of these rather than bouncing back and forth from our cutting table and our marking table and our iron and all of that. So it's a great way to streamline this dress and any project. All right, the focus here is really stitching a beautiful dart. That's the focal element of this design. It is not an over the top design as far as different seams and elements. And so we really wanna pay attention to accuracy and just a really beautiful dart and or seam line. Because of that, we really don't need any fancy stitches. A beautiful straight stitch is ideal. What you might wanna do is take a sample fabric and just run that through your machine and make sure that how you have your machine set up is going to correspond to what you're sewing. And we know that that's a great little sewing tip anytime we're doing a project anyways, is to sew a sample fabric. How your machine should be set up. I have the basic straight stitch on uh, set into my machine and I'm using a 2.5 millimeter stitch length. That's right in the mid range of uh, how long or short a stitch should be. Avoid really micro stitches because if for some reason you needed to take a stitch out in this area, it would be really difficult. But equally, if you have a stitch that's so long, then you're gonna see gaping in the seam allowance or the dart formation, and it may pop out at some point. So again, that mid stitch length. 
Uh, okay, we are using our Metrazine Mettler all-purpose thread in a matching color, and we're still using this beautiful Tiffany blue. Uh, this is the lining piece right here, and all of those match, and you can purchase those on nancysnotions.com. I know having matching th lining fabric and thread really makes uh, our job a little bit easier when it comes to sewing our garments. All right, well, let's take a look at a couple things here. Uh, we have the magic pins, as I shared a moment ago, and I love these for darts because as you're sewing, they're very fine. So you can put, I only have three here, but you can put as many dart pins in your dart formation as you feel necessary. But the nice sharp pin is right along where I have my dart marked. And then of course at the top as well. The nice thing too is that I can grab that little rubber gripper and set that aside as I'm still stitching the dart. I want to circle back to the dart tip. This is that controversial, do you tie the thread off or do you backstitch? And it's really, I would say, personal preference and based on the fabric that you're using. I have no problem personally doing a little backstitch on the dart on most fabrics that we're sewing. If you get into like really high-end couture or some very, very fine, delicate fabrics where you really don't want the bump in there, then absolutely tie that off. But really for durability and function, most of the garments and most of the fabrics that most of us are gonna sew and be using. I would say backstitch, it gives you that durability. You know it's not gonna pop open and, um, and it's gonna just help form that dart and you know that it's, it's gonna keep that shape. All right, well, we're ready to get started. I've got my pin cushion here and I'm sewing on a nice big flat uh, table, which is really the recommended way to sew. And so I can pull these out and I like to just have my pin cushion on small projects pretty close to where I'm working and then I, it just makes it a little more efficient. All right, well, we're gonna stitch all these darts and then jump on to the next step in making our Betty dress. pressing and darts, just briefly. All right, so I have started to press these pieces and you will definitely want to press your darts before you go any further in assembly. Now, the garment is starting to take shape, so it's not gonna lay perfectly flat. So anytime we're pressing, we wanna just focus on the area that we're working on. And this dart, for example, I've already put a fairly nice press on the start, and you can see it looks really, really beautiful and the fabric absorbs the pressing very nicely. And really heat and pressure is key to pressing. And so um, putting a little bit of heat, some pressure on there. And then a great tip is to use a clapper and press. And what that does is it conducts the heat away from the garment and it allows for a much sharper crease. If that's the, the, the style that you're looking for. You may have a fabric where you don't want it to have a really hard crease or a hard press. But what I would like to point out is that this one is pressed, this one is not. And you can see the distinctive difference. One, I think, mistake that sewers make is that they really don't know how to press or iron their garments when they're making them. And on a garment like this, even a very simple fabric, a good press can really make or break how this looks on the body. And you know what I'm talking about. You've seen a garment where it's not pressed very well or you're just looking at it and you think, oh, it just needs a little polishing. And that's what you're gonna do right here. The other thing I wanna point out is that when you're pressing, a rule of thumb is that the leg of the dart goes toward the inside or the center front. And if you're on the back piece, then on the back piece, it's gonna to point towards the center back. And those that would be for darts that are vertical or up and down. Now, if you're doing a dart like this, which is a horizontal dart, 
then you do not want the body of the dart pointing upward. You want to press it so that the body of the dart points downwards. All right, and let's just go ahead and put a little bit of steam on that one. Now I'm able to put my iron directly on this fabric. I'm gonna turn this just so I can have access a little bit easier. Um, I'm gonna turn this and I usually find that if I'm going from the outside in that I can kind of rock the iron a little bit right up to the point of the dart, make sure that it's nice and flat. And that's the point where I'm gonna hit that with some good steam. I'm pressing right now. And then that's where I'm gonna take this clapper and put that on there. And I'm just gonna let the heat absorb into the conductor of that. And as I remove it, if you look how beautiful that is. Now, I wanna share a couple tips. Um, I pressed this one pretty hard and you can see if you looked really close, there's a scant amount of the seam allowance of the dart. If I looked really close, I, would, I could say, oh, you know, you pressed it too hard. So if, you, if you're worrying about that or that's something that is gonna show through, then what you can do is you can take a little press cloth, you can lay that on top of the body of the dart and then go ahead and press and then that will prevent any sort of ridge. But um, this is a lighter fabric, so you will see some of the body of the dart regardless. So I'm not gonna, you know, hyper, hyper press or hyper analyze that. But again, every fabric's different. And so based on how you're sewing it, let's just kind of flatten this part out a little so you can see these beautiful press darts. Um, and they really are, it just really makes a, a great difference on um, how your garment is gonna look. So take a moment, put a little bit of press, a little heat and pressure, um, have a really beautiful flat dart. The nice thing about that is if you've done your pre-fitting, then these darts are gonna mold to your body and make it just a really great fit. So if we were to lay this over top of a pressing ham and then utilize that, and if I put a little tension on that, this is what it should emulate on your body and see how those darts, there's no points or things like that, that the dart really is going to contour to the curves of your body. That's the purpose of the dart, to take that flat fabric, three-dimensional, make it three-dimensional so that it fits your body. But how the darts look at the end really is just a technique on your part and understanding how to handle the fabric and the fit. So again, let's look at that. Um, and that can just be very, very beautiful. Our darts are stitched and pressed beautifully. We are ready to pin the front side seams to the back pieces. So as we're placing these on each other, they're gonna be right sides together. So you'll notice this is the front side of the bodice garment. And if I take one of the back pieces, I wanna make sure that the side that we will see or the dart uh, that we'll see on the outside of the garment, that's the right side, we're gonna place those together. Now, you wanna make sure that you line up the side seam with the side seam and not, uh, it would be very easy to switch these pieces around, but you have a distinctive arm's eye. This is the angle of the back neckline. Unless you've done some creative design, you might have reshaped that, but you'll wanna make sure that, again, the side seam is lined up with the side seam, not the center back with the side seam, all right? So let's lay those on our garment. Yeah, and we're gonna grab our pins and stitch, or stitch, we're gonna pin the side seams together. Now, once I get a couple pins in here, I wanna point out something with stitching the side seam. So we'll put a couple pins in there. I'm gonna do that on the opposite side, making sure that I start at the underarm and that we line the pieces up, which they line up beautifully you might pin vertically or horizontal to the seam. Um, I don't really have a preference on that, but what I wanna point out is this is the back of the garment. So let's flip this over just for a moment and take a look at where the dart is in the garment, okay? So um, a tip that I learned many years ago when I worked for a tailor shop really revolved around when we would do bridal wear. And so sometimes you have a large dart and this one's not overly large, but it's not real tiny either. So you have this 
uh, body or the, the fat part, the base of the dart is going to be encompassed in the side seam. Now, a problem that can arise is if you stitch the side seam and stitch right over top, and I'm gonna remove my pin, this is a really great takeaway. Occasionally when we're stitching across this um, part of the dart, it would be very easy to accidentally pull the dart. So let me kind of emulate that here. All right. And so what happens is you'll see how that is not laying very flat. Equally, we can shift the dart inward, causing a bubble and then a pull on the side seam. A lot of times I have my students who will come to me and say, you know, I've got a buckling in my garment or the side seam's not laying flat. And sometimes it's that there's a discrepancy in laying these pieces together. And I think knowing why that happens is really important. And this can be one reason. Therefore, a great tip would be to put a pin on either side of the dart um, horizontal to, uh, uh, or perpendicular uh, to the side seam. And we did this a lot in men's tailoring of trouser pants, getting the center back waistband uh, to match as well. So this is a great technique to use on all sorts of garments. So what's going to happen is you can sew from the bottom up or the top down. Um, it really, I don't have a personal preference, but whatever direction you sew, what you're going to do is you're going to stop and do a little back stitch. Then you're going to remove this pin. You're going to flip the dart to whatever direction, then you'll do a little back stitch and you'll resume stitching. This allows the body of the dart to roam free, basically. It's still pressed down, but it's, it's free flowing. And so it allows for more flexibility and also no issues with that pulling into the side seam. And if you catch that and you have major pulling in your side seam, you'll know it. So I would recommend that would be a great application on this garment. It just helps again for more beautiful tailoring of the, the bodice fit. Okay. Well, we are going to go to the machine. We're going to stitch both side seams together. We will repeat this on the lining and and then the other thing I'm going to do now is I am going to do a stay stitching around the neckline edge on the front. And then I'm going to do that along the neckline edge on the back. Even if we've interfaced our fabric, this is a bias area. And so look, look at how it can stretch. All right. Now this piece does not have interfacing on it. If I put interfacing there, a woven interfacing, that would eliminate some of that stretch. So I just want you to be aware of that. We've discussed that a little earlier, but right now we're gonna go in and stitch about a probably half of an inch from the edge, just to kind of provide some security as we get ready to finish the bodice garment. Okay, we are sewing the side seams. I'm starting with the lining and then I'll go over to our fashion fabric. We are only sewing the side seams, not the shoulder seams, and I'm using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So um, my pins are not where I'm basing that off of. I'm using the markings on my machines to indicate the 5 eighths of an inch. We have the upper part of our Betty dress completed. We are ready to stitch the skirt together and then we can join the two together. So we're getting closer to having that Betty dress all done. This is a actually really easy part of the dress. The pieces are a little bigger, so that might be awkward if you've never sewn a circle skirt before. So I have a couple tips for you. The back piece, which is what I have here on the table, there is a seam that goes down the center back and then that will follow all the way up into the bodice where we're going to insert the zipper. We're not gonna stitch that seam just yet, but what I want you to do is put some pins down the center back seam. It's a really great idea to kind of hold that together because we are going to sew the front of the skirt to the back at the side seam area 
and we do not want to mix up the side seam and the center back. That is so easy to do because they really don't look a whole lot different. But in the drape of the skirt, um, it wouldn't ruin your project if you messed it up, but you would run in, into some issues with how it hangs and maybe some length issues at the center back. So by pinning that together, it just helps you remember that that is not the side seam and you're not going to sew that. All right, so let's open that up. And you'll see that even, I've got a quite large area here, but this is all just the back of the skirt. Now, if this looks a little too full for your liking, you can certainly remove some of that fullness in the side seam area. Um, and so that's kind of up to you, but it would be really easy just re-angle the side seam uh, would be probably the most direct. Okay, so we are gonna do right sides together. Make sure at this point that um, if you're using some of these uh, crepe fabrics, they really are kind of a reversible fabric. So you wanna make sure that you are using the same side of the fabric on the skirt as you did on the torso. It, it might not be a huge difference, but just make sure that when you pin these together that, yep, that's the fashion side of the fabric and that it matches your bodice. All right, we'll do the same thing with the, the front of the skirt. We'll make sure that we have the right side of the fabric together. Here's the front of the skirt folded in half. We have a fold that's gonna go down the front, but we are going to lay this right sides together and kind of fluff that out. It gets to be quite a lot of fabric. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna put a couple pins in there. Now you'd probably have it laying nice and flat on the table, but if we put a few pins in here, we'll try to make it a little, little less fabric to look at here and pin all the way down your side seam, making sure that they're nice and even. You're ready to go to the sewing machine and stitch from the top down uh, with your regular uh, straight stitch. I do wanna talk about edge finishes at this time. If you are lining your dress, then it's really optional whether you put like a serging or some sort of zigzag stitch on the fabric. I'm a big fan of putting a whole lining in a garment. And when I do that, I don't have a need to serge it because that's just gonna add bulk to the seam. So if you're lining, you can omit that. But if you have a fabric like a denim or something that really is heavy enough and it doesn't need a lining or you're not using one, then on the skirt especially, you might wanna do some sort of edge finish just so it looks a little more polished and it will prevent some fraying. So um, you can do that after you stitch the side seam together or if you wanted to do a zigzag or an edge finish before you actually stitch this, that would be an appropriate time to do that as well. And the same thing really applies to the bodice. If you're lining it, you don't need to put an edge finish on there because they're gonna be encased in the lining. If you're using the facing, uh, then you're gonna see your side seams in the inside of your garment. So depending on your preferences, I'll leave that up to you, but let's sew these side seams and then we can join the bodice to the skirt and we're gonna be making our Betty dress. This is where our Betty dress really starts to take shape. And this is so much fun. We are gonna join what looks like a pile of fabric here together at the waistline. This is step seven in your printed instructions. If you wanna see a closer illustration of what we're doing, you wanna match the exact center front of the skirt with the exact center front of the bodice. And that's what we have here. So this is matching right sides together. So we've got a pin in the center front of our bodice. And then this is an area where when I pin it together, I usually will use vertical pins because we want the seam, it's a little hard to illustrate, but we want this to be flexible. It has bias anyways, because it's a circular cut around the waistline. So it's gonna have a little bit of give to it anyways. But I will tell you that a lot of times I will sew over these pins. Now, I know some people cringe when they see that, but what you're not, 
you're gonna turn the hand wheel, but what that does is it allows you to get right up to the area, turn the hand wheel, go over the pin and then remove it. And there is absolutely no shifting of the fabric. And we want, we don't want that because we want really accurate results. If you remove that pin and your fabric just shifts a scant amount, it's not gonna line up. So, uh, so it is okay to do that under a controlled situation. Let's finish pinning this together. We're gonna stitch around the waistline using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. If you wanna baste it first, First or use a bigger stitch just to check, that is fine. And then go back and do your official stitching, um, that is okay too. Oh, and then make sure that as you are lining up the side seams, that since you already have them pressed, that you aren't accidentally flipping them uh, the opposite direction of how you pressed them. So I'm gonna check that here, finish pinning as I mentioned, and then we are gonna stitch all the way around. So I came over to my ironing board. I want to press the waist seam allowance that I just stitched. And I'm gonna press the seam allowance pointing upward so that when I put the lining in this, that, that seam allowance will be enclosed. But I wanna point out that, uh, and I haven't pressed this yet, but look how beautiful this intersection is right here where we wove that pin into the seam allowance as I lined that up. All right, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna fold under the 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance allowance on one side of my zipper. I really, it doesn't matter which side. And I'm just going to put um, a pin there to hold that together. And I'm going to overlap that um, on the zipper. This is what it's going to look like. And, but what I want to do is take the zipper that I'm going to be sewing into the garment. And this is just something that I do. Um, you may want to do it. You may want to omit it. It won't hurt my feelings either way. Um, but what I want to do is lay my zipper uh, on the garment and kind of place it where I want it to to end up. If I don't want the zipper pull all the way at the top, maybe I'm gonna shift the zipper down because I wanna do a button closure, or things like that. Or sometimes I will sew the zipper so that the zipper pull is all the way off the garment and then that'll allow me to stitch all the way up and then um, I'll just trim that off when I'm lining the garment. So however you want to do this uh, for today and in this lesson, I'm just gonna line uh, the zipper pull, not the tab, because sometimes these uh, woven tabs, they're not always perfectly even. So when I'm lining up the zipper, I'm looking at where the top stop is uh, and where that zipper stops. So that's what I'm using. Uh, I know that I'm going to have a 5 eighths of an inch uh, seam allowance that's going to end up being turned under on the top. So what I probably am going to do is line up the um, zipper stop just below where that stops. And I'm not doing anything overly difficult here. It's just kind of holding it in place and I can put a pin in there if I want to. But what I like to do is take a pencil and I like to use a pencil because um, it, it's just not gonna hurt any of the fabric and you're not gonna see it. But I put a little mark and this one's gonna be a little darker than I normally would do. Um, but I put a little mark on the zipper because that is going to tell me that when I sew this to the garment, that seam line is gonna match that spot on the zipper. And uh, I can go across the zipper tape and you can take a ruler to that if you want to and put a corresponding mark. So what this does is when I go to sew this together, I know that when I put this zipper down uh, that this intersection is going to land right on top of that mark. And then if I do an overlapped zipper right here, when I fold that, it is going to also match. And then that is gonna help make sure that I have perfectly matched uh, seam lines at the waist and it's going to look great. And alternately, if I have a little excess at the top or the top or the bottom of the garment, it's not going to affect anything up here because we're going to finish this off later. And then we're going to go back once the zipper is in and finish sewing that center back seam. So I hope that's a helpful tip for you. I'm a big fan of putting extra markings if they help 
for accuracy, then they're a great tool. Let's get this zipper pinned on and we will go ahead and insert uh, the zipper using our zipper foot. Okay, let's sew this zipper. All right, so I have the right side of the zipper pinned in at least up to the waistline. And we're gonna start down here at the bottom and stitch up to the waistline. There is some give to this fabric. And so I want to address that. Different fabrics are gonna react differently to any sewing technique. So kind of anticipating what's gonna happen before you sew is gonna help you to have no surprises. If this were denim or a cotton shirting material, that's super stable, I probably wouldn't even put a lot of pins on here because I would be able just to stitch it without any hesitation. Now there, uh, there's a thread on the table. If you wanted to stabilize this, you could put some stay tape or twill tape or interfacing on the inside of the seam allowance to help hold that in place. You can baste this, which I is kind of my go-to, um, go-to solution is hand basting because I don't like to add a lot of thickness where you might have some show through to the outside of the garment. The zipper tape is going to stabilize it once it's in here. So if I needed to hand baste, now would be the time to do it. Um, I'm going to see if I can avoid that this time. Again, I know there's some give here. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, stitch and back stitch at the bottom of my zipper. I have a few pins in here. And yeah, so it's gonna shift just a tiny little bit. Uh, and as I mentioned, you can eliminate that using certain sewing techniques. So some of you are gonna say, oh, why did you do that? But um, I know that that's gonna happen. And so in anticipation, because this will happen to some of you out there that are sewing. So I wanna be very real and show you, okay, what happens when you're sewing your zipper? All right, and okay, this, pops up. Like nobody shows you like, okay, you feel out there like, oh, I did something wrong. That is why I did not pin this all the way up here. So I can remove this pin. All right. And then I can just, I'm not stretching. What I'm doing is I'm just going to allow the fabric to relax and it's just going to sh um, shift up a little bit on the zipper tape, which means that the, the um, zipper stop at the top is going to sit Oh, not quite a quarter of an inch lower than initially planned. So if you can anticipate that, then you have the option of starting with your zipper up a little higher in the seam allowance, okay? Uh, again, you can eliminate this happening, but I just want to be very real because I know a lot of you out there, that's going to happen. So I'm going to make it happen too. <laughs> All right, so we're going to get to the... Um, the uh, the intersection of the waistline and the zipper. Now, I do remember that we had a little marking on there. So because we had a little shifting in our fabric, we wanna go back when we zip it up and just make sure that we either, they match or that we need to put a new marking on there. All right, a denim, as I mentioned, a stable fabric, that's not really gonna happen. Now, if you remember, and I don't even have a pin on here, but look how nicely this is sewing. If you remember, we have some interfacing um, on the underside of this. And so it's just a little more stable, but we don't need the interfacing on the skirt. So um, that's why, again, we encountered that. Okay, so we have the zipper sewn in the upper portion. And then of course we have the zipper sewn into the skirt. So it looks beautiful. We will want to iron that. Um, here's the inside I've got, I did go ahead and serge um, if you chose to do a serging on the edge. But, um, but the idea is just let your fabric relax as you're sewing, put a nice press on it. Um, and this will, once we press this, that'll hang a, a little bit more flat. Um, and I can't wait to wear this. So let's press this and then jump in and stitch the other side of the zipper. All right, we are ready to stitch the corresponding side of the zipper. Now, um, the nice thing, it's kind of like sewing our lining first. When you use one side of the zipper and you see how your fabric reacts to the sewing, you can compensate for that on the overlap because that's really the polished edge of this zipper. So um, we know that we encountered a little bit of give uh, on this side. So we have some options and decisions to make. We can stabilize uh, the fabric, but sometimes even stabilizing it, we may just need to do that basting stitch. So I have a thread here with some heavier, or a needle with some heavier thread. And what I'm just gonna do is run a stitch 
And I'm doing this a little bit at an angle, so ideally I would have this on my lap, but I want you guys to be able to see it. So I'm able to just kind of weave my needle in and out. This is just utilitarian. I can do very beautiful even stitches, but this isn't the normal way I would sit to do it, number one. And um, it's not necessary right here. I'm not gonna hyper, hyper design. I'm just basically putting a piece of thread in here to hold the fabric in place. I'm gonna stitch very near where this thread is, so then I'll have to pull that out when I'm done but I will know uh, that the zipper is right where it needs to be and everything lines up beautifully. So it just takes a couple seconds to do this. And again, um, your job here isn't, don't worry about having beautiful hand pick stitches. Although if you, I, I do love doing a little hand pick zipper and my favorite technique is at each stitch is to put a tiny little bead. So if you wanna try a hand picked zipper, that would be a really fun application here. But this also is a, a little more simple fabric design. And so it's, I really, again, I don't wanna ever overdo. We can over design. Um, and so here we're just focusing on some of the main elements of our sewing. Um, and you know what, we, I wasn't going to, but let's just take a moment and go ahead and take this basting all the way up to the top. There's a, a great amount of stabilizer up here, so I'm really not worried about this popping out, but it's not gonna hurt anything to take a couple extra seconds and do that. The nice thing about doing a, an anchor stitch like this is that um, you can remove all of your pins. And I know some people struggle with um, removing the pins and having the pins shift and things like that. So there's not a sewer out there who can't do what I'm doing right now. And you're gonna take it out, so uh, again, don't worry about being fancy. You're not gonna impress anybody because nobody's gonna see it. <laughs> All right, we'll save that for another episode when we wanna do something really decorative. Okay, so this looks great. We have this anchored in here. If you like the um, <laughs> crazy basting stitch, you can certainly leave that. But now, um, this allows us to put this under the machine and again, I just wanna be very real. Um, we always wanna strive for excellence in our sewing to the best of our ability, um, but not everything is about um, really fancy, fancy stitches. You know, this is something that we can pull this when we're done uh, and pull that out. So let's get our bar tack at the bottom. I know some sewers that do not like the bar tack at the bottom. I do like it, um, but if you're not a fan, then you can omit that if you choose to do so. All right, we're gonna move this around and I am ready to stitch and we'll be able to get this out from our machine. So if we look at our zipper right here, you'll see that I was able to look real close um, to have a nice straight line of stitches. So I'm gonna go in and Let's just, I'll probably do this in two parts. We don't want the pin there, it was magnetic, but I'm gonna clip, clip one of my stitches there. And if I'm ever so careful, I can pull that top portion out. There we go, beautiful. So you can see that, all right. All right, well, let's uh, continue. We're gonna finish the lower uh, center back seam and I think I'm just going to show you that real quick. You can reference the illustration in your pattern instruction. Very, very easy. So we have the center back pinned. What I like to do is I like to flip this over and on this side because I have my zipper foot in there. And so what I like to do is uh, stitch toward the zipper and 
This one's a little awkward in that you really want to make sure that you're stitching right up to the base of the zipper, but you want to make sure that you don't catch anything and that your seam allowance is all going one direction. So you're a little, you're a little sewing blind. Um, you can stitch, you can be about a stitch or two below the base of the zipper um, and not have it hurt anything as far as, you know, having a hole in your garment or anything. And then what I like to do is flip this back over, line up my seam allowance, and then stitch back down. I don't think there's anything wrong with doing that in two steps. Yeah, you'll notice I still have my zipper foot on in here and it's fine. I can certainly use that for stitching the center back seam. And again, I'm not stretching the fabric if it happens to be a fabric that has some give. I'm just allowing it to relax as I sew. And then that way there's no pulling or drag lines. And of course, once I'm done sewing, we're gonna go over to the iron and on this particular portion, I will press the seam allowance open and that'll be the center back seam. So let's get that press. We'll take a final look at what this looks like and then we're ready to finish uh, the top with our facing or lining and then we'll tackle our hem. All right, we're on the very last side of our neckline, the side back, and I forgot my pin cushion, so I have a whole pile of pins <laughs> right next to me here as I'm sewing. But we are going to kick this in the driveway here as we come up on the zipper, and you'll notice that I have the seam allowance folded back. And that is going to allow for a fold on the lining. So when we have this all clipped and ready to turn inside, that will finish off the, uh, line, the zipper lining on the inside of the garment, which it's not attached yet. So we're not quite ready for that. But we've gone through uh, all the neckline, making sure that we have left that 5 eighths of an inch hem allowance open on all of the shoulder seam areas. The next thing that we wanna do is take some scissors. We're gonna go ahead and um, trim off uh, some of our uh, excess uh, in the seam allowance. And then on areas that have a curve, once we trim, we're gonna go ahead and put a few clips on there. Now, if you wanna omit this particular step, you can sew this with a much narrow seam allowance, like a quarter of an inch. Uh, some people like to remove some of the, the excess seam allowance before they even do the stitching. Um, in this particular case, I don't have a problem trimming it down, but this is gonna show you what you're gonna do here. Again, we're gonna take scissors and we're gonna trim off. Let's just do one little section here. Um, basically making our seam allowance about half and then that'll allow uh, some clips. To do the understitching, what you want to do is have your lining face the seam allowance. And what I usually do is take my project and you're not going to be able to understitch the entire area um, that we just sewed. And let's actually pull this back out here. So what's gonna happen is we wanna flip the lining and only the lining so that it lays over top of our seam allowance. And then we're gonna run some stitches, oh, about an eighth of an inch to the inside of the seam allowance, which is then basically stitching the, the lining toward the seam allowance. 
That way, when we turn this inside out, it's going to roll beautifully. So what I like to do is basically get as much of the fabric under the presser foot I can on a garment like this. When you're getting up into the shoulder areas, go up in there as far as you can that you're gonna be comfortable with. If you're new to sewing and you're not quite sure what all that mess is back there, then don't understitch quite so far back. You can also start from the end and, or the outside and work your way in. But this looks pretty good. What I'm gonna do is put my needle down and I'm using the markings on my machine there. So I'm understitching. You'll see that the lining is going toward the seam allowance. I am not catching the fashion fabric. So this row of stitching is going to be on the inside of the garment. We'll back stitch there. Get a sneak peek there. So let's hold that real still so you can see under stitching and how beautiful on this Bimberg lining, it's beautiful. And what that will do is when we turn this and we want to press this edge, once we get everything completely turned inside out, which I'm not ready for yet, but um, you'll be able to see that this nice roll on the edge, I'll put a little crease there. Uh, the understitching will also further stabilize that a little bit. Here's what it looks like on the inside. Um, just beautiful. So make sure you don't skip that step. Well, I'm going to take a moment. I'm going to clip all of those uh, trim, understitch, and then we'll be ready to finish off the shoulders, add a hem, and our dress will be done. We have just stitched the lining on, trimmed our seam down, clipped our seams, understitched as best we could in most of the areas around the, the top edge and the neckline. The last finishing step of this Betty dress is to stitch the shoulder seams together. Now, this might feel a little awkward if you have never finished a dress off like this, but the first time I learned how to do this, I was in college, and I just loved how you could finish this dress together, have a completely enclosed lining or a facing, and then create these beautiful seams. It, it makes you wonder how the garment was even made. If you, if you take the time and do it really nicely. So what we're going to do is we are going to lay right sides together on the shoulder seams. Now it does not matter how wide or narrow this shoulder seam is. You'll be able to use this technique. But what I want to point out is what we are not doing. We are not just stitching across all of the layers. So if I were to take and pin this together, let's just put one pin in there. What we're not doing is stitching the shoulders together like that because what happens is you, you do need to definitely finish this off, but it makes it really difficult to have a really nice finish. Now, something that maybe is a lace fabric, you might finish off this way. So I guess I don't wanna say that you can't do it this way, but let me show you uh, probably what would be considered a, a better or maybe a much nicer way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna peel the lining material back. We don't want to catch this in our sewing. If it helps, you can put a pin there just to hold the lining back, okay? And then let's do that on the corresponding piece. If you get real comfortable doing this, you can omit the pin, but if you're new, to sewing or you've never done this before, or you just need an extra hand, pins never hurt anything. Okay, so we wanna make sure, we want to make sure that we don't twist these when we put them together so that when we turn them right side out, it's twisted. So I like to kind of flatten my garment, make sure I have one continuous curve and then that way I can line these up and know that when I do sew them that I'm going to have uh, a, a beautiful arm's eye or arm opening there. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to line these edges together. And I think again using a pin vertically to hold them together is really useful because when we go to stitch from one edge to the other, we have the seam allowance here that we want to open up so that we can stitch from one edge 
all the way to the other. Now, some sometimes it is difficult to get this just all to lay nice and flat in the sewing machine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I get the first portion in and I'm going to stitch to the pin and then kind of rotate. So I'm going to kind of like rock my fabric through there. So when I get to this pin, I can then take this seam allowance over here and flatten it and stitch right to that um, edge. Hopefully that makes sense. It's kind of one of those you really just have to see it and do it. Uh, kind of difficult to verbalize that, but you can do this by hand if you really have, a, especially if you have a small shoulder seam. All right, now, so I'm using my fingers to just kind of hold this flat, but I'm not really worried about this. I'm worried about the back side here. So I'm gonna line up. Uh, if you need to put a chalk mark there, that's fine. So we're gonna stitch forward, backwards. Uh, I'm making sure that I'm not catching anything on the underside as far as the lining goes. I'm going to come up to this pin, stop, remove it, and then as I start stitching this side of the pin, I'm going to reshift my fabric. Let me get my hands out of the way. Um, so basically, I, I'm pulling all the seam allowance toward me so it's nice and flat. And then now I can stitch right up to the seam allowance on this side. And matter of fact, the person who taught me this, uh, I won't name names, but um, ended up um, doing a lot of a major bridal line in New York City. We interned together, and so he is actually the one who taught me how to do this, and I'm forever grateful. Okay, so here we go. Um, this It's not quite finished yet, but you'll see that the shoulder seam is stitched. Now is a great time to try your garment on and just make sure that um, that the shoulder seam fits. Sometimes have you ever put a garment on and you think, oh, I wish I could just like take the shoulders up a small amount. So now would be a good time to do that. In case you wanted to tighten the shoulder, what you would do is you would go back in here and you would just take a deeper stitch uh, in the seam allowance. And sometimes if you do that, you might have to pop a few stitches so that your lining will open a little more. But we're going to finish this off and then I'm going to re repeat it on the other side and this step will be done. Now is a great time to go to your iron. You can put, um, uh, put a little press on one side. Um, and just work it however you need to do that. Um, you can go in and catch this by hand stitches if you prefer. Otherwise, what you can now do is we're, see how that's all flat, we're able to take this side and we're now gonna overlap, but we wanna make sure that we fold under the, um, the center area. I'm gonna reach behind and grab my pin that is on the opposite side and I'm just gonna catch this right here now. All right, looking better. It's almost polished. And then as, uh, and this again, use a use an iron if you want to, but make sure that you've got a nice fold or roll on the side seam area of the lining. And again, I know this is kind of tiny, but you'll see how that starts to look very polished. Uh, I just think this is such a clean way to finish garment. So I've got some pins in there. What I'm going to do is get a, a, a little needle and thread and I'm gonna go in and I'm just gonna ever so delicately and in tiny stitches catch that uh, down up one side. I'm gonna do little stitches going across the top I'm going to do little stitches when I go across the top here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to catch only the lining. So if this were my needle, I would catch just the lining layer. So kind of a little delicate whip stitch. When I get over here, I'm gonna make sure that I do either side of the seam so that on the outside, let me move this. And I'm gonna go ahead and just remove that pin. So on the outside, minus the pins that I have back there, it's going to look flawless and continuous. And that is how you uh, do an open shoulder uh, closure on a garment. It's beautiful. It gives you a little opportunity to do some hand stitching, which I love. It's just very calm and uh, a you'll feel very uh, in tune with your couture self. But really, it's just a basic uh, stitch to close the shoulder seam, but it looks beautiful. Okay, we are ready to hem our garment and we are done.
The last step in creating our beautiful Betty dress design is a polished hem. So let's place our fabric under the machine and see what a narrow rolled hem looks like for the perfect finish. All right, the finishing touch to any garment is a beautiful polished hemline. We're ready to do that and we have a beautiful long circle skirt edge uh, if you've gone with the fullness in the pattern. Now some of you might have removed some of that but in essence it still has kind of this bias which means that it's cut a little off grain and it has some give or stretch to the bottom edge. Now I have gone through and placed a, just a basic four thread surged edge it's not required. What I'm gonna do is just turn this under one time and I'm gonna stitch all the way around this. So let me flip this upside down. Now, if you don't have a serger, that's okay. The other option would be to turn it under once and some people like to stitch this and then once they've gone around once, then they'll turn it again and the ending results would be a completely enclosed, narrow rolled hem. Because of the large width of the skirt, the, the wider a hem is, the more narrow a hem you want when you're doing a rolled hem. Because a wide rolled hem, let's just make this really wide. Uh, number one is gonna remove a lot, but it might look straight right here, but all of a sudden you're gonna be in this large continuous curve and it will not lay beautifully flat for you. You will be very unhappy with the results. Um, so again, keep your hem very narrow. What I like to do, and I, I, again, I, I just look back to all my years working in a tailor shop and learning how to hem things without pinning. Um, so you really can do this. It's not about speed. Um, it's just about a comfort level. But basically, you get to the point where if you are working from the bottom side of the fabric, you can turn your edge under about a quarter of an inch. You're gonna run your presser foot and then when you get to where your fingers are holding it, you stop and then you're gonna position the next set of fabric and then continuously go around the skirt. It's, it's a skill that takes a little time to do, so you're, that's how I'm gonna hem this. But if you're thinking, oh joy, I can't do that, it's okay. You can go ahead and draw a line on here with your hem gauge, put some chalk, and then put some pins around the edge of the hem so it holds itself in place, and then just remove those as you're going. Whatever your comfort level is, that's what you need to sew to. And then if you feel like you wanna challenge yourself, that's okay too. We're gonna to let the feed dogs on the machine do its work, do its job, and we're gonna go ahead and stitch around this machine. One other thing that I'm just gonna point out is that I'm actually using the presser foot on my machine as a guide. So the roll is gonna go right on the edge of the foot, and I'm gonna use that quarter of an inch length from the edge of the foot to where my needle is to stitch this down. It'll be just not quite the center of where I have this folded under. You, of course, can stitch right up on the edge if you would like, or you can stitch a little closer to the hemline as well. But I think a good, about a quarter of an inch distance is really great. I can utilize my presser foot as a guide so I can visually see the width of what I'm doing here. All right, here we go. It's a long hem, so we'll see you on the other end. I told you that was a long way around our hem. We'll clip a thread here. 
see what that looks like, a beautiful, and it'll need pressed, of course, but um, that is a narrow, about a quarter of an inch rolled hem. We'll press that and we are ready to wear our beautiful Betty dress. Thank you for watching. We are so excited to be sharing in your sewing journey. Make sure you reach out, like, subscribe, and if you have any questions, post those in the comment and we'll answer those there. Make sure you check back next time to see what we're gonna create. Like us on Instagram and Facebook, and we will see you in another Nancy's Notions wardrobe builder video.